Hello, and welcome back to The Grunt Perspective. And in today's video, I'm filming yet another video on my TAPS kit. Um, if you're unfamiliar with, with the TAPS, this is the chest rig that is currently issued to the Marine Corps and the Army. Um, and it is the non-armored -ar way to carry the fighting load um, that the U.S. military is currently using. Um, this is heavily modified. I have a whole video that breaks down uh, the modifications that I've done to it. Uh, so if you see something on, on here that you know isn't um, standard TAPS rig, I have a whole video on that that you can go and check out. Um, so I've already done a video on this. I've already done two videos on, on this. And the reason I'm doing another one is because I've changed some things. Um, and I think it's worth making another video to go over what I've changed, why I've changed it, and how. Um, and just to, in general, talk about like some of my experience with how it was previously set up and how it wasn't working in some ways for, for me. Um, to, I'm sure that you guys are looking at this right now and you're thinking like, yo, that thing is fucking huge. Uh, it looks heavy. And it is heavy. Um, but you know, I'm not a special forces guy. I'm not, uh, I'm not frequently doing raids and assaulting things. This is, I'm an infantryman, right? And as an infantryman, our bread and butter is patrolling, patrol base operations, attacking defense and things like that. So, um, you really need to carry a lot of shit with you. If you're an infantryman, like we don't necessarily always have the luxury of knowing exactly what we're going to be doing, right? Our, our mission statement is often very vague and it often changes, uh, while we're out on patrol or already in mission, it changes, right? So you have to have the stuff that you need to have with you to fight during all 24 hours of the day, all the time, right? Uh, you could go out, during the day for a few hour patrol, or at least you expect it to be, and you get in a gunfight, and now you have to stay out there for longer. Uh, maybe it gets dark, maybe it doesn't, right? Or you go out to do one thing, as you're halfway through trying to do that thing, you have to, your, your mission changes and you have to go support someone else. And then the only thing that you have to do that is what you brought with you on that mission. Right. So this is just my fighting load. Right. I'm, I'm never going to go on patrol without some sort of small assault pack or patrol pack and things like that. But the rule that I try to follow with what's on my fighting load is I should have at least enough stuff on me to sustain myself and not die of exposure or other means within 24 hours. Right. Um, you might get caught having to sleep outside or, well, I mean, you're going to be outside, but you might get caught having to sleep away from the stuff that you need to sleep with. So like, you know, you might get caught where you need to be out there for longer than you expected to, and you don't have enough water, things like that. So, um, at least 24 hours is, 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 is what I try to live by. And, um, then I go on a pack and then within the pack, I try to have at least two days to three days worth of stuff um, to, again, further my capabilities and things like that. So um, with all that being said, like a lot of young infantrymen and things like that, like they, uh, they, they, they don't necessarily wrap their head around that. Maybe it's because they see stuff on Instagram or on other forms of media that like, all they see is like guys that are special forces and they're doing 24 hour in and out assaults and raids and things like that. And the reality is that's just not what we do, you know? So we have to have different stuff. And a lot of guys try to set their gear up for the, for the raids and the in and out like missions and things like that, which the infantry does. But just like I said, we don't always have the luxury of knowing what we're going to be doing before we do it. You know, um, so I have a lot of stuff on my kit because this is the stuff that I need. 
and um, going into it like you just never know is all I'm trying to say. So starting to talk about it. Uh, this chest rig is heavily modified. Uh, I have a whole video that breaks down all the modifications that I've done to it. If you're curious, uh, it's one of the first videos that I posted on my channel. Um, so if you want to watch that, then please go ahead and watch that now, watch it later or do whatever you want. You're your own man. Um, either way, I'm gonna start talking about what is in this now, just to go through it again, because, uh, for people that haven't seen that first video, and then I'll talk about the changes that I've made as I get to them. So most of it is a, is a lot the same. We'll start on the sides here. On the sides, I have the issued, the Molly 2 canteen pouches with a one quart canteen. And both of these canteens have the black tops that allow you to drink water with a gas mask on. On like the negative space that's inside of these canteens, I have catted in water tablets that are taped. I've got two packages each so I can purify um, what is that? Up to eight quarts of water. I have the two full ones. If I come across a water source that, and I'm running low, I can use these, or maybe you're just, you know, you're getting water from a sink or something like that, but it's still questionable. Never be too safe. So I've got, uh, two quarts of water on, on my gear here. Uh, on the subject of the canteens, I like to opt for hard containers for my like emergency stuff. All the stuff that's on my fighting kit is like stuff. It's like the last stuff that I'm going to use, right? Uh, I'm going to use batteries. So I'm going to drink water. I'm going to get all my other supplies from my ruck before I start pulling stuff from my fighting kit. Because like I said, this is my like last line. This is my last ditch of things that I'm going to need. Um, so I've got two quarts of water. I usually don't go for camelbacks on the fighting kit because they leak, pop, things like that. And then before you know it, you're out three whole liters of water. And that was the only water that you brought. Just clipped onto the strap here. I have a set of mechanics gloves. These are like the cheapest ones that they sell. They're good. Uh, they're a good blend of being dexterous and durable. So like the problem with the pig gloves is they fall apart really quickly. Um, as an infantryman, you're going to need gloves and it wouldn't be a bad idea to have some durable gloves because you're going to be grabbing sticks, trees and things like that as you're trying to pull, your, pull yourself through vegetation and whatnot. So I would definitely recommend having some, some durable gloves. Uh, these are the mechanics fast fits, which are just clipped on a little carabiner to the strap on, on my canteen pouch. Now in the small pockets on the canteen pouches, in the very back of my left side here, I have a Garmin GPS. Um, Garmin's are good, but you have to be careful with them because these things can sometimes be tracked, picked up on, spoofed and things like that. So really this is like my stand in in training when I don't get a military GPS, that's a lot more safe to use for the user. Uh, but it rides back there. Uh, on the front left here, I have my, uh, my camouflage paint. Always, if you're white like me, then you gotta, you gotta conceal that skin. On the other side here, I got a couple things. A signal mirror and one of those Ranger cards from Black Hills Designs. Uh, they work pretty well. Um, they give you a good, accurate, somewhat accurate, like a distance that you could use for fire missions, things like that. Um, or maybe you just want to try to ID how far away something is from you. Uh, we have on here a standing man, uh, a vehicle, like an average size vehicle, and then a IMF container, which is a shipping container uh, for those three. Uh, and then the signal mirror. I have a whistle here, which I've used for signals and things like that. Definitely useful. Um, I've only used it a couple times though. So maybe if you don't want to carry it, then whatever, but it weighs nothing. It's small. I forget about it. Then on the front side here, 
I have a headlamp. Uh, this is the Princeton Tech Bite. I like this one because I click it once, red comes on, and if I want white light, then I click and hold, and then white light comes on. So I never have the chance of doing like a white light ND. Uh, I just know if I click it once, it's going to be red, and then white if I need white light to hold it down. Now, moving in, what's behind these pouches here? On the left side, I have a spare magazine, uh, which is usually the, the one of my magazines that gets loaded and goes into to my uh, to, to my weapon. And then this is the Taps radio pouch. Fits a 152 or 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 153 inside there. And then I have a little modification here to keep that a little bit more secure because those flaps suck. Again, if you're curious about it, it's on that other video. To talk about it, just because it goes in that pouch, this is my push to talk. This is a Disco 32 push to talk. And it just connects right into the radio. And when it's not using it, it just sits inside that pouch like that. On this side, I have an SE4. Um, this was not in the original video. Uh, I decided that I wanted to put this on my chest rig because I was having problems with comfort with the knife sheath being under my belt. I had a drop leg for it or I had a dangler for it and the loop was uh, the only thing that was under my, my main pack hip belt was the loop, but I was still feeling it. So I decided that uh, I'm going to put it in the chest rig and I just have some zip ties that are fixed to uh, the little internal loop on that flap or inside that pouch that holds it in there. Tucked right behind that. Kind of hard to get out, but it's not a big deal because like I said, this is the last stuff that I'm going to use. I have a package of batteries, four, one, uh, four double A's, four, one, one, two, three batteries. Again, these are the last batteries that I'm going to use and it just sits right in there. I haven't had problems with it coming out. Uh, it sits right under the lip on this knife sheath here and it holds it in there quite nicely. This was previously on one of the internal pockets. I decided to move that to one of the mag pouch pockets because um, that hard case was was rubbing up against my side and I was feeling it after a few hours. So I decided that I'm going to put that somewhere else uh, right there as I think where it's going to stay. I had it in, inside of my NVG pouch for a little bit, but right there is I think where it's going to stay. Uh, it fits inside there. I forget about it. I don't even notice that it's there. Now moving forward onto the uh, far left and right sides here. On my right side, I have my NVG pouch. This is an Eagle Industries 100 round saw pouch with an insert that I keep my elbow mount and my rhino mount. Uh, with PVS 14s, you can put the elbow on and put it inside the pouch. And that's how I normally do it. Or with, or with the 31s, take everything off and the 31s will fit right inside there. And then I have a dummy cord, which on my on my NVG, I have an S binder attached to it that gets clipped in right there so I don't lose it. And then I have the Velcro and the buckle. So that's like triple retention inside that pouch. So I know I'm never going to lose my NVGs. Um, over here, I have my IFAC now. Uh, so previously, I had my IFAC inside of this pouch set up as a dangler hanging below with these malice clips. Um, I decided to not do that anymore because it was bothering me. I've said it on the channel a couple times. I don't really like danglers uh, because they get in the way of my legs when I'm walking up real steep hills and things like that. And I was finding that when I had the dangler on there, when I was walking up a steep hill, it would get in the way of my legs and I would like tuck it up like this to get it out of my way. Uh, so I decided that I'm going to not do that. And now I have another brand 100 round saw pouch that I keep my IFAC in. Um, I got the full IFAC suite inside there. Uh, but, you know, you carry wh whatever your unit wants you to carry. On the side of it, I have shears and I uh, have them rigged up so they have a little bit of retention to them, but I can still pull them out quickly. I just stole one of my wife's... Uh, hair ties here 
and then they they tuck into a molly slot right there on the side of the pouch and then the hair tie goes all the way down to the bottom of the shears and clips around them like that just like that so shears good thing to have you should definitely carry them because trying to cut up in like a person's clothing with a knife like you're gonna stab that dude you're gonna cut that dude so having shears you definitely need a little bit more control when you're doing something like that uh then on the front here i have a small sharpie that again just gets tucked inside a little molly slot right there works out pretty well now behind both of these pouches one little quirk about the taps kit is it has six magazine pouches and two radio pouches but the first and sixth magazine pouch because of the way it shapes around your body they kind of get crushed and they the magazines don't like to come out of there very well so instead of putting a magazine inside there in both of these i have tourniquets because they're a little bit smaller and they fit a little bit better inside of there um, so i got two two tourniquets i was previously carrying three because i had one in the ifac i now don't have room to carry that uh, but i'm still comfortable with having two tourniquets on my kit and then, you know, we have the CLS bag or the med bag that other people have tourniquets in and whatnot. Um, so I would definitely like to have at least three, but maybe I'll figure out a way to do that in the future. Coming up to the front here, I have one smoke grenade pouch. See, I have a smoke in there. It's in, in, inert. Don't call the cops, right? Um, but I have a smoke grenade there. And then I have two frag pouches again. This is a inert frag grenade, so please don't raid my house, but right there. And then I have another frag pouch that is empty right now. Um, things about frag pouches and smoke pouches. I see a lot of infantrymen that don't put them on their kit because to be honest, we very, we very rarely get issued like frags or blue bodies in training. And when guys do, they just put them in their pockets and things like that. Uh, don't set your gear up for training. Set your gear up for combat because in combat, you're going to have frags and you're going to have smokes and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I've got two frag pouches and a smoke grenade pouch. The cool thing about these Tactical Tailor smoke grenade pouches is they're large enough to fit a, a smoke, obviously, but they're also not so large that... You can put a frag inside there and it doesn't com completely like swallow it up and to get it out you just kind of squeeze on the bottom like that until you can pull that frag right out of there um now moving up to the front here i've got four magazines previously i had retention on all but one i decided to take those off because the inserts were plenty sufficient uh, i'm not jumping I'm not a fucking paratrooper because I'm a Marine, right? Uh, so I didn't really need the extra retention. The plastic inserts that are inside here do a fantastic job. So four. And then I got the other one and then one in my rifle. Let's get this table look nice and organized for that. For that good picture uh one thing to talk about here is i previously had a multi-tool pouch on the front uh, for my leatherman wave i have the pocket clip for it now i could have just had two 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 grenade pouches on the front but i decided that i want to have the ability to carry two frags and another sort of special purpose grenade uh, so this is going to go inside my pocket from now on with the pocket clip on the inserts here, these are the Haley Strategic MP2 inserts. Uh, they just literally drop right in. I've never had them pull out or anything. They work great for the TAPS rig. A lot of people don't know that. So that's uh, something that you can get that's going to really update and like make your TAPS rig a lot more usable for you. Because these flaps are too short to wrap around PMAGs. The TAPS rig was, was designed for uh, aluminum mags. And the, Vel and the Velcro flaps work with aluminum mags, but with PMAGs, they, 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 they usually don't work very well. Now, getting around to the backside here, 
You can see I have an H harness. Again, uh, if you're if you're curious about how I did that, I have a video on it. Just go just go check it out. Or you could buy the Spiritus Taps Kit Update thing, uh, which is a good product. I've never used it personally. By the time that they came out with that, I had already done all this to my Taps rig. So either way, on the inside here, I keep an air panel for signaling. Use that all the time. Uh, and then inside here, I keep a space blanket, uh, which is also orange, um, just, you know, for casualties or maybe, you know, I, just like I've been saying, you get stuck out for longer than you were expecting and you need some way to not freeze to death at night. And then inside here, it's empty right now, but this, that, that's where I'd usually keep my maps and my admin equipment and things like that. I usually keep all of my like admin gear or like the stuff that you would think that goes in an admin pouch. I usually keep that inside of a right in the rain notebook cover inside my cargo pocket. So this is usually just only a map uh, that goes inside there in training, maybe my cell phone or something like that. But either way, um, yeah. So that's uh, all the differences and updates that I've made to my TAPS kit. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram or drop it inside the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.